My name is Mahasan Cheney. I am an assistant professor of education here in the department. And I have been here for a little under a year in the department, but I also started as a postdoc um, at Brown with the Center for the Study of Race and Ethnicity and the Watson Institute. So I was trained in an education school to think um, really interdisciplinary about questions of educational, racial, and economic inequality. Um, I consider myself a critical policy scholar of education. And so what that means is I am interested in really critical questions related to policy, um, taking seriously uh, relations of power, um, thinking about um, racism as a core um, construct for how we can um, interpret policies, how we understand how they work, and thinking about uh, educational inequality from um, a wide range of policies. So how is it that schools relate to other systems of, of uh, economic inequality, for instance, um, how systems of knowledge or ideas uh, thread through um, our policies and reforms. And I'm really interested in how we think about uh, policy and inequality from uh, various positions of power. So how is it that policymakers uh, deploy ideas about what it means to uh, be successful e educationally? Um, how do we think about the role of social science? How do we think about the role of reformers, um, philanthropists? And so thinking about the systems of knowledge that inform our policies and the ideas that thread through that allow us to illuminate um, how even educational uh, policies that are designed to bring about uh, what we might imagine to be more equitable-based policies also have threaded throughout them uh, ideas about racialized children and beliefs about who they are and, and so forth. And so I'm really interested in thinking and taking seriously these questions about power and how they work through our policies. I'm currently working on a book project that is uh, tracing the strands of school discipline policy. And in this project, I am using this critical policy approach. When we think about school discipline, we often uh, want to understand, you know, what distinguishes um, a student who's well-behaved from a student who's not well-behaved? And so these types of questions tend to focus on the child themselves and think uh, about um, questions about school discipline in these more behavioral based terms. But we know from research on school discipline, school discipline disparities um, are very racialized and there are beliefs about black children, for instance, that tend to make all black children troublemakers, whether or not they consider themselves troublemakers or not. And so these broader questions would uh, seek to take um, the issue of school discipline away from like behavioral based implications to thinking more systemically about how schools make troublemakers. What is it about the beliefs of teachers, the structure of schools, the policies themselves? My project is looking even beyond the school to say, um, how is it that our educational inequalities broadly even outside of schools, uh, educational policies related to uh, urban children, related to poverty, how is it that those policies also kind of thread these ideas about uh, urban children as troublemakers. And so what are it's, what is it about the beliefs of black children, or urban children as troublemakers that thread even through policies that have nothing we on the bare face to do with discipline? I think what these, this project seeks to do it, um, and how it illuminates these questions of educational inequality is that it asks us to take a very central question. So for instance, this question of school discipline, how it is that um, school discipline disparities impact inequality, um, how is it that discipline makes inequality in schools. I think the implication for this is to, to understand how policies that still impact us today have historical linkages that we can trace and try to unpack. So what is it about the nature of history and the history policy that can illuminate how we understand the present moment? Um, so one implication is to think broadly about in historical terms about how history can inform how we understand uh, contemporary issues. And then the other implication is to say that, you know, even though there are, um, practices in schools that we consider punitive. So we might, for instance, think about school police, um, very strict zero tolerance policies, um, 
the presence of uh, security personnel. So those are que those are questions that are related to discipline and the punitive structure of discipline. And my research suggests that we also think outside of even uh, outside of these more punitive uh, measures to think about other policies that again are designed to bring about uh, more equity in schools, but also have embedded in them central beliefs about urban children as troublemakers too. And so it gives us a broader perspective of thinking critically about how we understand what punitive policies even are. I have loved teaching at Brown um, and I teach a range of, of classes, both undergrad and graduates uh, in our urban education policy program that have at the central these questions about educational inequality. So for undergraduates, I teach a, a class on introduction to educational inequality. Um, one thing that's really important to me as I teach through both undergrad and graduate students is to allow students to think very critically and to critique our own ideas coming into the classroom. Education is a really interesting field because so many people, everyone who has you know, come into our classrooms here at Brown, have some experience with education in a very, inter, um, in a very immediate way and a very personal way. We have very broad based ideas about what leads to educational failure. Um, what does it mean to have uh, unequal schools. And so we are both um, interested in our coursework to uh, use some of the personal experience we have in classes, but also to push against what our beliefs about the causes of those are. And so I want us to, in our classes or in my classroom, to think, you know, about these questions of educational failure. What 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 constitutes educational failure? Um, how do we come up with the, even the ideas of, a, of what failure is? To really think critically about the policies that we are reading that we might think are good or bad. Um, so to think in more nuanced ways about the ways uh, all of our reforms and policies have both uh, the capacity to bring about um, measures of opportunity and also are very limited in their capacity to do so. So these are concerns that I bring into the classroom to, to push students to think critically about their own ideas, to think critically about the policies and reforms that we have, um, and to allow more nuance into thinking of beyond just good and bad. It's just, uh, uh, in more open and holistic ways. I would really hope that when students are in my classroom, we are thinking about the full range of what constitutes good schools um, and pushing us to think about really effective policies that really push beyond just listing um, children as damaged um, in their schoolwork or in their classroom. So what makes a really beautiful school? What makes a really happy student? Um, what, 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 what are ways that we can think about educational inequality in ways that don't feel so doomed and then don't place the doom on the children themselves? So that's one thing that I am working to challenge myself as an educator and the students who are in education to think about. I think the easiest way for me to think about this work is um, that I, was a student in urban schools. I'm interested in school discipline policies because I was disciplined in schools. I watched um, my peers be uh, um, unfairly treated in schools through discipline practices. I've seen the ways that education can both bring about uh, what we think about like, uh, you know, opportunity and also the ways in which they can really prevent students from achieving what they want or what they can dream about. I am interested in, uh, in really understanding those ideas about, um, you know, how can schools be um, this gateway to opportunity and how can they inhibit the same opportunity they seek to produce. And so I'm really just constantly wrestling with that question and still really believe in the power of education. So it's like a complicated space to think of schools as places that really reproduce inequality and harm and also as spaces that bring about um, something akin to um, social justice or freedom um, or any other kind of idea about the, the glory of education. So one question um, that I think I is an important one is how the students here at Brown ha having um, 
impact my own thinking. We are really lucky to work with such deeply engaged students, um, really critical thinkers um, in both our uh, urban education policy program, but also our undergraduate students who take the work really seriously and who come up with these ideas that I hadn't even thought of. Uh, one question would be just like, how is it that students are pushing our own ideas about the work around educational inequality um, being so closely tied to it because they might be younger or also um, because they're just deeply pas passionate in ways that allow us to stay in the work and still taking these ideas seriously and wanting to push our ideas forward. So that's one question.